cattails growing down by the river. Cattails have so much to share, it's hard to keep up with all they have to offer. Species come in wide and narrow-leaved varieties. Both have similar uses and edible products, so either is fine. I use the broader ones as they provide more food mass. My favorite parts, the flowers and pollen, both appear in June. During the early part of that month, the green bloom spikes emerge. They usually go unnoticed because they're hidden by the leaves. Peel the sheath back to reveal two distinct sections. This is the flowering bloom spike, the cattail's flower. The male is always on top, the female is always on the bottom. The male is the part that you want to collect. Oftentimes there's a space between the male and the female. Break the male part off like this. I'm going to peel it here in the field so I won't have to do it at home. I'm going to gather a bunch of these males to make kitten on the cob. These males are now stripped and ready to go. Boil these for a couple of minutes. Cover them with melted butter or olive oil and eat immediately as they lose flavor when cold. Throw away the central core. Some people eat the female parts, but I don't bother with them. There's not much meat there compared to their male counterparts. Besides, it's easier to remove the male parts. I can use my hands. Here I have to use a knife. It's not easy. The core is much thicker. Here's a comparison of what I got from a male to what I got from a female. During cattail season, cattail loaf is a mainstay in my house. I serve it to my guests who haven't had any experience with wild foods. It's a simple recipe to make. I collect about 24 medium-sized males and separate the meat from the cobs to make about two cups. Any extra scrapings can be frozen. To the cattails, I mix one cup of breadcrumbs, one small onion that's been sauteed or cooked in water, finely chopped, a half a cup of jack or vegan cheese, a dash of black pepper, one egg, and a half a cup of milk substitute or milk. I have a, a cup here because oftentimes you need to add more liquid. You just have to see as you go along if you need more liquid. Put this in a greased dish and bake for 25 minutes at 350 degrees. Since oven temperatures may vary, you may have to cook yours longer. Combine leftover loaf with hummus for an excellent sandwich spread. If allowed to ripen, the male stalks produce a brilliant yellow pollen in mid to late June. This fine powder is non-allergenic, nutritious, and free. Its season is short, and it has to be collected on a calm day so it doesn't blow away. This pollen is called Pua Wan Fen in China, and you can order it on the web from there. But why bother when you can get it locally? To collect, bend the stalk into a plastic container and shake gently to release the pollen.
Repeat this process until enough is collected. This can be time consuming and be prepared for a scolding by red-winged blackbirds who are trying to protect their nests from human invaders. After I've collected a fair amount of pollen, I filter it through a fine sieve to get rid of the insects and debris. To extend the harvest even further, place cattail stalks onto a plate or wax paper. Let them sit for several hours or overnight so they can shed more pollen. Gently tap each head to release additional powder. Freeze the pollen as it gets moldy if left out. It will stay powdery and last for months. Use the protein-rich pollen to add a warm glow to pancakes, muffins, and smoothies. I've barely touched on all that can be done with this common and versatile plant. Check out the many other videos on YouTube to discover new ways to include cattails in your life.